So what is the challenge of working with a printer that has uh, one of these? So Bowden cables are a very common type of printer. Most Ultimaker printers use this. There's a, a number of uh, the Enders all use this. A Bowden cable machine is a machine that has the drive motor at one end, but then the nozzle and the extruder at the other. Um, and the reason it's used is because a Bowden cable keeps your extruder head light. So these machines are generally very good for kind of high resolution, high surface quality parts because they don't have much vibration out here at the head that's moving around as it's printing. Uh, the problem with Bowden cables is they are not very good with very many materials. Uh, Bowden cables, you are pressing the filament through a tube backwards. So just pushing back here, but it has to come out here after going through all the friction of this tube. So they're very tough to kind of control and tune, which is why only very kind of heavily controlled machines exist for it that have really defined print profiles. Um, but Bowden cables, again, give that print quality if you've got the settings tuned appropriately. Here's the things to be concerned about if you are tuning a machine or you're working with a Bowden cable. Number one, retraction legs. If you have, you will need a slightly greater retraction than if you are using a direct drive machine. The reason for this is, is that there's basically a very small amount of slack inside this tube because the, the filament is not perfectly fitting with this tube. It's kind of got a, a loose bit of slack in there as it compresses inside the tube. So you need to make retraction a little bit higher. Very often that's somewhere between about five to 10 millimeters. Um, also, you have to worry about the friction of the tube itself. If you're working with exceptionally soft materials like TPUs, Bowden cables are very difficult to work with because again, the filament is inside of it. And since it's compressible because it's rubber, it expands inside the tube and it grabs the tube. And even though PTFE tubes are very uh, uh, frictionless, oh, pretty good about it, they still have a lot of compression in there. The way to do TPU with Bowden extruders is basically to go very slow so that any compression inside of there, you can think of it like a compressed spring, has time to release and go out. Otherwise, you'll end up with inconsistent flow or just straight up jams. Also, if you're doing retraction, you have a very fast initial retraction to reduce stringing, but then again, a very slow prime speed uh, if your slicer supports it, so that you reload that extruder before you start printing again. And that gives that TPU basically time to pro process and move through uh, the tube back into its initial position if you run retraction. Very often, if you have a Bowden tube, with TPU, you might just want to kill retraction completely if in an extreme case and if your part doesn't need it. That's true of TPU in general. So those are kind of the general things to be aware of with TPU. If you're working with performance materials, such as carbon fiber, your TPU tube is going to wear out very slowly. That carbon fiber is going to tear up the inside of your tube. So after probably about two or three days of printing with carbon fiber or some other really gritty filled filament, uh, you'll want to replace the tube, otherwise you're going to end up with halfway through a print and your $100 spool of filament is going to be wasted because the print failed. That's pretty much it, everybody. So if you have a Bowden extruder machine, those are kind of the basic things to control. Just make sure that you're dealing with the extra retraction distance to take up the slack. If you're working with TPU, go really slow and again, give it lots of time to move back and forth through the tube. And if you're working with abrasive materials, just make sure to replace the tube every once in a while. Have a good day, everybody.